Lady of seat, won't you help me announce my sermonic thought to somebody? Look at somebody you came to church with, tell the neighbor, I've got the faith to dig again. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I've got the faith to dig again. Uh, my brothers and sisters, as we pause and give uh, consideration to the climate of our world today, I believe that each and every one of us over these last few seasons or last few years of our lives have at some point encountered the possibility of or the reality of the spirit of defeat. And what I have discovered about the enemy of our minds is that the enemy desires to utilize the spirit of defeat and opposition to create doubt and distraction in the life of the believer. I often make note that the enemy really doesn't want our houses, he doesn't want our cars, he doesn't want our job, he doesn't even want your joy, he can't do anything with it. But he often utilizes those things as conduits by which to cause a spirit of doubt and distraction. And so the enemy often tries to manipulate the faith of the believer by upsetting the flow of what belongs to us. And often when we as believers find ourselves up against seasons of rigorous trial and rigorous circumstance, we tend to forget the promises on which we stand. But what I have found about the enemy is that because he doesn't have any power to deal in the realm of our physical existence, he specializes in the spirit of distraction. The goal of the enemy is much like the one that the Bible lends credit to, that he walks around as a roaring lion, cunning in his nature, seeking whom it is that he may devour. And because he cannot touch you, he attempts to manipulate your faith. That's what the enemy does because the plan of the enemy is if I cannot get to you, then perhaps I can frustrate you enough to cause you to give up on what you already know God promised you. Now, I know that it's early in the sermon, but I wonder if there's anybody who can just take about 10 seconds to tell God thank you for the fact that the enemy wants to frustrate your faith because if he's trying to frustrate your faith that's just an indication that he wants you to forfeit before you see it then what that ought to tell you is that I'm not necessarily waiting on God to do something new for me I'm just waiting to reach the place that he has already promised me and the reason why that's good news is because if he's promised me something then there has to be a reason why I'm going through what I'm going through if, if he promised me something then that must be an indication that the process that I'm in right now is not designed to destroy me but rather it must be designed to develop me and that's good news to us today because what that tells us is that there is a promise that's attached to this process I don't know what process you're in right now I don't know what you've been up against in this last few years of your life but what I've come to tell you is that there is something greater on the other side of this and I know that that's not always easy and I know that that's not always comfortable I know that it's not always painless but there is in fact a promise that's attached to this process and church that's the first thing that I need you to understand even at the onset of this message today because the promise that God made to us is really the fuel that we need to make it through every process in order to unlock the flow that God is taking us to in fact I believe 
that the reason why you are seated here in this sanctuary this morning and the reason why you woke up early enough to catch this message the reason why you're hearing this sometime in the future is because you have been uniquely positioned at a crossroad in your life between breaking down and breaking through and you need to understand that the promise that's on the other side of this process is worth you holding on just a little while longer because I got a feeling that if you just make it through this God's about to unlock unblock and unleash some crazy stuff in your life in this next season who am I talking to early in Ebenezer that got crazy faith that God's about to unlock some stuff in my life and really today I have come to preach to all of the people in this room that have seemingly been up against more enemies than victories to tell you that in spite of everything that you've been up against in the last few years the preacher came to tell you this morning that this is your season to dig again because I got a feeling that you are about to strike in the place of promise in fact I wish you would wave at somebody on your row early in the sermon and tell them neighbor hold on just a little while longer because I got a feeling you are about to strike into the place of promise in spite of the long nights that you've had in spite of the tears that you cried in spite of the suffering that you faced I got a feeling that any day now God's about to cause you to strike into the place that you have been praying about who am I talking to who said I've been praying for a long time I've been crying for a long time but I'm about to strike into the place that God has promised me y'all be seated I got a little ways to go but what I have discovered now is that in order to reach the place of promise what I have discovered uh, Reverend Marriott is that you have to first ready the ground with your posture that uh, your posture is essentially the key that will unlock the wells of promise in your life but the problem comes in when we have people who follow God God who believe and who have faith but feel like we ought to have promise with our process yeah I came to burst your spiritual bubble this morning to tell you that there is no promise without process because having promise without process is like building a house with no foundation and what I have discovered is that where there is no foundation you are not sure if the, you can handle the weight of what's being released on your life and what I've come to preach to this morning is those who have been in the middle of a process that has seemingly distracted your faith because the process is not designed to destroy you but the process is designed to develop you the process is what gives you the promise to, the place to plant yourself without being moved by every wind that blows your way it's the process that fortifies you and teaches you and trains you for the promise because there is a difference in being handed something and knowing that you have walked for something and what you're about to walk into will require work because it's the trying of your faith that works patience so let patience have its perfect work why because patience is a principle requirement in order to walk in the promise and y'all that's exactly where we find this man named Isaac in the text today because when we come upon this story that is set before us today Isaac finds himself in the midst of a very rigorous process now process is defined as the method by which something is done but then process can also be defined as the development of a thing and what we must learn how to defeat as believers is learning how to be those who survive the process because it's in the process 
process that the enemy seeks to distract you. It's in the process that we find ourselves facing abnormal adversity. It's in the process that the enemy desires to set into our minds and cause us to miss that while the process can be difficult, the process can be the very thing that determines your endurance in the promise. Yeah, it is the process that produces the steadfastness that you need and the tenacity that you need and the strength that you need to not just reach the promise but to maintain the promise. See, the process can be the determinant between those who just get there and those who are able to stay there. And I just want to pause parenthetically here to tell you that I'm not just one who wants to just taste the promise but I want to live in the abundance of the promise. I don't just want to see the promise but I want to live in the promise. I don't want to just touch the promise but I want to behold the promise because the things that God has for me are not things that are fly by night but he has ordained me to live in a season of abundance and overflow and healing and peace and joy and power and that's why I have discovered that you want to learn how to change your prayer because some of us have been asking God to take us out of the process when your prayer ought to be God sustain me until I learn every single thing that you have for me in the process I don't want you to pull me out until I've learned how to endure I don't want you to take me out until I've learned how to suffer long I don't want you to take me out because I don't want my anointing to take me somewhere that my character can't keep me I want to be able to maintain what you are taking me through I wish you would wave at somebody down your row and tell them neighbor I want everything that God has for me I want to live in the abundance. I want to walk in peace and joy. I don't ever want to leave the promise. And when I get there, I want my testimony to be that I work too hard to be moved from this promise. And so whatever my lot, I have learned how to say it is well with my soul because I have been in the dark room long enough to be able to stand in the, pro in the promise place. Y'all be seated if you will. Oh, but what I need you to understand is that there is power in the process. I need you to talk to somebody on your own and help me preach my sermon and tell them, neighbor, there is power in the process. Just stay there a little while longer. But what you got to understand is that the process is designed to work for you because we know that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are the call according to his purpose. What I came to to tell you is that what you're in right now is not designed to kill you uh -huh. but it is designed to give you the endurance you need to hold on to where God is about to take you and because of that I came to drop something else in your spirit to tell you that where you are right now will not destroy you it would not kill you it would not take you out but it is going to develop you and that's where we are witnessing with Isaac today who has to endure a great process y'all but the process is not just sent to develop your faith but the process is also sent to develop your character and as we follow Isaac through the text today we find that Isaac is the son of Abraham who has a promise from God one that was not just told to him but one that was first church told to his father and what I have discovered about the enemy is that he does not want us to understand the power of intergenerational testimony. Reverend Trish, I'm going to take you back a couple of years to show me your stones. The enemy doesn't want us to realize the power of intergenerational promises because when we understand the power of intergenerational promises, we understand that we are not standing on our own merit or on our own goodness, but rather we are surviving because of the prayers and the covenant that God made with some people that came before us. Isaac is in a very interesting position because
knows he has a promise that has been given to his daddy and I came to tell somebody here today that the reason why you're going to make it through this is because of the promise that God made to somebody who he was in covenant with concerning you and maybe you're saying preacher my mama or daddy wasn't even in my life but I thank God that the word tells us that even when my mother and my father forsake me it is the Lord who will take me up even if you didn't have your mama and daddy I know somebody who can tell God thank you for your grandmama and thank you for your God mama thank you for your teacher and your guidance counselor and your pastor that stepped in to pray for you and the reason why you're still standing here today is not because you've been so wonderful it's not because you always got it together but you're standing here because somebody prayed for you and had you on their mind took the time to pray for you I wonder if there's anybody that could just throw your head back and shout I'm so glad that they prayed because had it been on my will I would have conked out a long time ago had it been on my merit I probably would have given up a long time ago but thanks be unto God who is always causing us to triumph over the enemy y'all be seated I got a little ways to go but Isaac is the product of an intergenerational promise and the reason why you ought to be encouraged today is because you ought to understand that God made a promise to somebody concerning you and God is not a man that he should allow nor is he the son of man that he shall repent but the good news this morning is whatever God spoke he is more than faithful to do y'all Isaac has been passed down a promise through the generations and now he is in a position where he has to learn how to endure the process for that promise but your posture can open up the door and determine the level of your victory in attempting and attaining to reach the promise and so perhaps today your question is preacher what is the posture for securing the promise well what Isaac is teaching us today is that we must first be the kind of believers who learn how to have faith against all odds because when we come upon Isaac in the text today he is experiencing an abnormal adversity have you ever felt like you were up against more than the usual that every time you turned around if it wasn't one thing it's another that's where Isaac is in the text because every time we find him in the text he seems to be at a disadvantage y'all the Bible tells us that Isaac is sent now to the land of Gerar but what we must understand is that the land of Gerar is in the middle of a famine so Isaac is physically planted in a place that is already at a disadvantage he he's placed in a position of lack he has literally been sent down to a place that doesn't seemingly have anything that looks like the promise have you ever discovered that on your way to the promise that your promise and your placement won't always line up that there will be some seasons of your life where God will plant you in places that don't look like where you're headed but can I tell you the reason why God will plant you there is because he wants to teach you to understand the posture of faith and here's the first thing I need you to understand about the posture of faith you got to learn how to trust God in strange placements I need you to help me preach my sermon and tell somebody on your own neighbor you got to learn how to trust God in strange placements can I tell you why because verse 2 of this chapter tells us that God himself told Isaac do not go down to Egypt but I need you to stay in the land of Gerar now God this doesn't make sense to me because Gerar is in a famine but Egypt has plenty Gerar has nothing that I need but Egypt has everything that I need Gerar is in the middle of going without where 
Egypt is in overflow and when you look at it you recognize that Egypt is just about 30 miles from the land of Gerar so wait a minute God you mean to tell me that you gave me a promise that belongs to me but then you instruct me to go and plant myself in a place that doesn't have what I need but not only would you tell me to plant myself there but you planted me close enough to the thing that I think I want don't you know that sometimes in this journey God will put you next to what you think you need just to find out if you can trust him with where he's sending you because if you can trust him with where he's sending you he's going to prove himself to be more and more tears so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word I wish you would talk to somebody on your own and tell them neighbor the grass ain't always greener on the other side the reason why you've got to learn how to trust God in strange placements is because the Bible says that God told Isaac not to go down to the land of Egypt but stay where it is that I have sent you but I come to tell you that when you learn how to stay where God has sent you no matter what it looks like and no matter what it feels like no matter how long he has you there God will turn around and teach you how to survive and then bless you for trusting him because the Bible says in verse 12 of this chapter that Isaac planted seed in the ground in other words God planted him in a strange place because he had to teach him that I am able to give you more with nothing than you could ever obtain with people who have something and the Bible says that not only did Isaac learn how to plant seed in a place where there looked like there would be no harvest but it said that in that same year he turned around and saw a 100 fold increase meaning Isaac has been planted in a place that looks like nothing but because he learned how to trust God in that place the Lord turned around and blessed his harvest in a place where there was nothing and gave him more than he could ever act, think or imagine and now unto him who is more than able to do exceeding and abundant above everything that you could ever act, think or imagine I came to tell you that the reason why why you got to learn how to trust God in strange placement is because when you trust him with strange predicament he'll turn around and give you a strange harvest when you trust him with strange placement he'll turn around and give you strange blessings because it is your obedience that will unlock your overflow I need you to tell somebody I got a feeling that with all that I've had to endure where I that I'm about to see God do something for me before 2022 ends for the Bible says in that same year he saw a 100 fold blessing I wish you would talk to somebody on your own and tell them I got a feeling that I'm going to see it this year before 2022 ends God's going to bless my family before 2022 Two ends. God's going to touch my money before 2022 ends. God's going to raise my children before 2022 ends. I'm about to walk in a new position because I'm going to see it this year. You ought to talk to somebody on the other side and tell them neighbor, tell them I'm about to see an unorthodox harvest because of my unorthodox placement. I've been standing still and waiting on God to show up and I got a feeling that the next four months are gonna be easier than the last eight months because you gonna see it this year you ought to wave at three people around you and tell them neighbor I'm gonna see it this year yo I've come to let you know on my way out of this church that God has you in strange places not to deplete you but
but he has you there to build your faith and he has you there to increase your capacity he has you there so you can watch God perform something out of nothing and I just want to know is there anybody here that's glad to know that you can trust God in strange places your Isaac is in the strange position because he's in a place where there is a famine but not only is he in a hard place but after he finds success in that place the Bible tells us in verse number 14 that the people became weary of his prosperity that they begin to envy him for all of the harvest that God had bought into his life and I came to tell somebody that the enemy don't like you in this season and the enemy got a reason to be mad at you because you would think that the people of Gerar who were already in a famine would have learned how to take from Isaac and understand how he reaped the harvest you would think that they would be trying to set up a network marketing system to learn how to wholesale from the harvest that he had but the Bible says the people became envious of his blessing y'all the reason why the enemy couldn't stand Isaac is because he learned how to survive in a place that killed others and he learned how to survive in a place that should have killed him and I came to tell somebody that the reason why the enemy is on your track in this season is because the devil ain't happy that you learned how to survive in a place that should have killed you the enemy expected you to die in 2021 the enemy didn't expect you to make it through 2020 but is there anybody here that can throw your head back and shout I'm still here and it's by the grace the grace of God that's why the people won't congratulate you that's why the enemy won't let you be happy because he never expected you to survive this long but can I tell you that for every enemy that was mad at Isaac he was able to bring on more servants to man the harvest because every time God blesses you he will increase you to bless somebody else so in this season I've learned to change my prayer that if they don't ever call my name if they don't ever celebrate my value if I don't ever make it on their program God just bless me to bless somebody else because if I can help somebody along this journey then I have discovered that my living is not in vain I wish you would talk to somebody on your own and tell them my prayer is that God would increase me my prayer is that God would enlarge me if they don't ever give me credit for making it through God just bless me so that I can bless somebody else I got to get out of here but Isaac is at a disadvantage because he's already in a land of lack but now there are people who don't want to see him win and so the Bible says that the enemy came the people of Philistine the land of Gerar they said to Isaac you got to leave our city you can't stay here any longer we don't want your blessings in our land we want your strategy but we don't want you but guess what y'all when Isaac saw that the season had shifted the Bible doesn't tell us that he wrestled with the people to stay in garage the Bible doesn't tell us that he went to God and asked him for the favor to stay where he was but the Bible says he moved out into the valley can I tell you about the posture of 
have your faith. You've got to learn how to trust God in strange places. But you also got to have the faith to move when God says move. Can I tell you why? Because you ought not ever become so attached to what God did in one place that you don't recognize that the same God who did it over here is more than able to bless you over there. You ought not ever get so attached to what you found in one place that you forget that the same God who blessed you here is able to do it three times over there. And I came to tell you that perhaps you've been praying about what to do in your season when God is saying that there is nothing that is wrong with your business there is nothing that is wrong with your strategy there is nothing that's wrong with your anointing but it's time for you to make a move because there is detriment in making permanent placement out of temporary assignment you got to learn how to understand when God says move would you talk to somebody on your row and tell them neighbor it's time to move God is calling you calling you higher I know you're comfortable in garage but if you move there is more than you ever expected you ain't talking to the right neighbor because the right neighbor would have been running by now talk to somebody on the other side of you and tell them neighbor if you trust God with your next move there is more than you ever expected there is exceeding and abundantly more favor in your next place because God has a plan in everything that's why I learned to celebrate that the steps of a good man have been ordered by the Lord because wherever the spirit of the Lord is there's his blessing and his power and his presence and his favor I came to tell you that it's time for you to make a move would you talk to somebody on your own and tell a neighbor it's time for you to move. Y'all, the Bible tells us that Isaac trusted in strange places. And Isaac moved when it was time to move. But can I tell you that when he got down into the valley, he began to dig into the wells that his father had opened in his day. But y'all, the minute he began to dig that same old enemy came to find him in the valley and the Bible says that the minute he struck water that the enemy came and wrestled over that water and can I help you to understand that the reason why the enemy is messing with you even in your next place it's because he doesn't want you to understand that God is with you and if God be for you there is nothing and nobody that can be against you I came to tell you that it's your season to dig again because the Bible tells us that Isaac moved from that well and he went down to the next well and as the servants begin to dig for the water they had struck into the place of promise but they begin to wrestle with him over that water and the reason why the enemy 
tried to, to mess with them there is because the enemy understands that if you can't beat them, you might as well try to take what belongs to them. But when you have a promise from the Lord, there's a fire that keeps on burning until you reach the place of promise. And I came today to reignite the fire in you, to tell you to dig again. Cause I gotta feel it, I gotta feel it, I gotta feel it that when you dig this time, God's gonna bless you in that place. For the Bible says that Isaac went to the third well. He pulled out his shovel and the servants began to dig for the water. And when they found the well of water, there was no struggle, there was no enemy, there was no fighting, there was no warfare, there was no obstacle, there was no hardship because they had reached the place called Rehoboth, the land where God has made room for all of us. And if God has made room, that means that God had to move some stuff out of the way to show you that there is nothing that is too hard for my God to accomplish. And that's why you've been going through so that God can prove to you that he can move every hater, he can move every doubter, he can move every stronghold out of your way. But guess what, y'all? The Bible says that when he got to Rehoboth, there was no struggle for that place. I'm on my way out of here, but I came to announce over you that after all of the times that you tried, after all of the tears that you cried, after all of the nights that you struggled, I came to announce that if you dig this time that heaven has released that the struggle is over the struggle is over the struggle is over what you do do me a favor get out of your seat and wave at three people and tell them the struggle is over the struggle is over no more worries the struggle is over no more anxiety the struggle is over no more dark nights the struggle is over for weeping may endure for a night but y'all 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 y'all
The struggle is over. I wish you would lay your hands on yourself and declare the struggle is over for you. Hiya. Yes, Lord. That's good. Thank you, brother musician. Listen. Yeah. You can stay right there. Isaac had to understand the posture of faith through the trying of his faith. God planted him in a temporary place and told him, plant seed here and watch harvest here. Sometimes you think your harvest is coming in your permanent placement when your harvest is really coming when you learn how to plant where you've been placed. Even if you got a plan in another man's territory, even if you got a plan in strange positions, even if you got a plan from strange seasons, where you plant, God will cause harvest. Isaac had to understand the pastor of your faith is learning how to trust God in strange placements. But then Isaac had to understand that not only do you have to learn how to trust God in strange placements, but you also got to understand when it's your season to make a move. Because there is great detriment in trying to make permanent placement out of temporary assignments. What God had anointed him for to learn in that place was not necessarily what God had anointed him for as a promise in that place. And when we have the spirit of discernment and we learn how to pray through our seasons, God would differentiate what I'm trying to teach you versus where I'm trying to take you. Isaac had to learn to trust God in strange places. He had to learn how to make a move when God said move, but then he had to learn how to dig again. Because the thing about the enemy is when he can't beat you, he'll try to laugh at you. He'll try to torment you. Then he'll try to take what belongs to you. He took it in one well. And Isaac, why'd you keep going? Because I know God promised me something. I'm going to try again. He dug again. He, he tried it in that well. God, I know that God told me something, so this is not the end for me. Isaac, what are you doing? I'm going to dig again. The reason why I'm going to dig again is because when God has made a promise to me, he has to fulfill his word. And not only does he have to fulfill it, but he's going to do it in a way that's going to cause me to understand why he had to do it this way why i had to face a no over here why he had to reject me here because what happens is he got to rehoboth the place where god has made room for him but god wanted to show him in digging again is understanding that when i make room for you i'll move everything else out of your way and that means that i have designed a space that only you can occupy and the reason why I had to move everything else out the way is so that when you get there, nobody else can pull you out of it. When you get there, you have ownership over it. When you get there, I have given you the deed to that place, that place of promise, that place of blessing, that place of healing. And the reason why I had to let you go through was so that you could understand that there is nothing that is too hard for my God to solve. I got to get out of here. I've been up here past my time, but listen, Today, God is saying, dig again. He's saying, because when you get to this place, there will be no more struggle. There will be no more fighting. There will be no more quarreling. There will be no more wrestling because victory belongs to me. Mr. Cliff, can we raise it up one time? Everybody say, the struggle is over. The struggle. I'm extending the invitation to Christian discipleship in this moment.